So upon the initial 8600K benchmarks last week, we found that it was a significantly quicker processor than the 7700K in multi-threaded workloads. And even when the 7700K was overclocked to five gigahertz, it was still not enough to catch the stock 8600K. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I was expecting a much closer result between these two processors. On one hand, we have four cores and eight threads with eight megabytes of level three cache. And I thought this was easily enough to fend off the new kid on the block, let alone an i5 chip with six cores without hyperthreading and nine megabytes of level three cache. Both can clock up to around 5 GHz, but my particular 8600K sample can go quite a bit further, all the way up to a stable 5.2 GHz and even 5.3 in some tasks. Now, synthetic benchmarks are great. Programs like Cinebench R15 and 7-Zip give us a great idea on the multi-threading potential of these chips, but they don't give us the full picture when it comes to real-world performance. When I saw the export times for encoding a full 10-minute 10 1080p project in Adobe Media Encoder, I was pretty surprised to see the overclocked 8600K take a massive 21% lead over the overclocked 7700K, and this sparked a bit of curiosity because if the i5 was faster in terms of encoding times, then it might also be faster in terms of video playback, warp stabilizer, rendering video effects, and other tasks completed in the video editing process. So that's what we're going to be clearing up today. And I know, where the hell is Ryzen? You guys must think I'm an Intel fanboy at this point, but trust me, you guys, I love the Ryzen processors, but I can't just go out and buy any PC hardware when I feel like it. I understand that the benchmarks aren't exactly complete, and I'd love to follow this video up in the future with an R7-1700 or R5-1600. Be sure to like the videos, share them around, because at the end of the day, that's the only way that's going to happen. All right, let's get into the benchmarks. Let's start it off with Premiere Pro, looking at the warp stabilizer effect. For those who don't know what warp stabilizer is, it's an algorithm that analyzes the pixel travel between each frame in any given video clip. It then stabilizes the clip by scaling up by about 1% and then repositioning each frame in the clip so that the playback is smoother and less shaky. I use this on pretty much every B-roll clip as it makes it look buttery smooth, where otherwise the speed of the panning or sliding would be inconsistent. Now, this algorithm is very CPU intensive, and for a 10 minute video, I could easily spend 30 or 40 minutes just waiting around for the warp stabilizer to complete. So here, I've taken a 25 second clip that was filmed in 4K at 30 FPS, and this is what we're looking at in terms of warp stabilizer times. The six core 8600K is the clear winner here, and we're saving around 46 seconds when comparing the overclocked i5 to the overclocked 7700K. This is pretty significant, and that time adds up very quickly as we'll see later. Moving on, let's look at how long it takes to render a preview in Premiere Pro. This is something I'll do after I've spent around 10 or 15 minutes editing some clips together and I want to play back that sequence nice and smoothly. So here's a typical one minute clip and I was surprised to see such impressive scaling by the six core chip. And this is definitely a task that can utilize those extra cores, but not necessarily those extra threads from hyperthreading. Despite the 8600K having two less threads, it's able to beat the overclocked 7700K at stock speeds. Next, I want to see how many frames we're dropping during a playback of a 60 second 4K 30 FPS timeline. Sometimes I just want to quickly playback a sequence of clips without completely rendering it out. And this test gives us a good idea on how smooth that playback is going to be. Why is this important? Well, if the playback is buttery smooth, we only need to play it back once. Whereas if we're dropping frames all over the place, we may need to play it back in sections or a few times. Again, the lower scores are better here, and this is for playback in full resolution. The 7700K is really struggling here, dropping almost 80% of the frames at stock clock speeds and almost 70% once overclocked. This sort of playback is pretty much unusable, and a quick fix for this is to drop the playback resolution to half so that it looks a lot smoother. Now, even at half resolution, the playback on the 7700K isn't exactly smooth, and at 5 GHz, we're still dropping almost half of the frames. Stepping up to the 6 core i5 though, and we're getting virtually flawless playback once overclocked, with only 7.5% of frames dropped over the entire playback. Another CPU intensive task that I complete for some projects is motion tracking done in After Effects. Now the way that this works is that you select an area of pixels and then that area is then tracked frame by frame throughout the whole clip. When it's done, you can attach text and other objects to the track and you get this nice seamless motion tracking effect. 
We're using a 4K clip again, this time only 10 seconds, and here both processors are completing the task in around 25 seconds. The improvements here aren't really going to be significant unless you're doing a lot of motion tracking in your project. Still though, a 16% improvement for the overclocked 8600K when compared to the overclocked 7700K. Okay, lastly, let's look at encoding times. Faster export times are important for obvious reasons, as during this time the computer is basically unusable. Forget playing any games or doing anything productive during this time because your CPU is going to be at 100% load for at least a few minutes. This is the exact benchmark that I included in the 8600K review, so let's check out some more typical settings that I'd be using for the channel, for example a 5 minute 4K video. Here we're encoding in H.264 with a target bitrate of 30 megabits per second and a max bitrate of 40 megabits per second. And here we can see an absolutely enormous improvement by stepping up to the 6 core i5. The overclocked 7700K is completing the export in about 22 minutes, whereas the overclocked 8600K is completing it over 30% faster at just over 15 minutes. Now, all of these benchmarks are all well and good being separate, but I wanted to bring them all together and see how much time we'd actually be saving if I made the switch. So essentially we're adding up all of the tests to get an estimate of how much editing time a 10 minute video project would take. So the values that we're adding up are 120 minutes of editing time plus five minutes worth of warp stabilizer plus a 30 second penalty for every percentage of frames dropped during playback. Lastly, we also add 10 minutes worth of render previews and finally the time it takes to encode the project with the settings we used in the test. So for the stock 7700K, this brings us to 14,394 seconds, but I've shown the results here in minutes just because it's much easier to compare and relate to. So with our example, the stock 7700K, we get a result of about 240 minutes, and once overclocked, that improves by around eight minutes. By stepping up to the six core 8600K, we're able to improve that again by another nine minutes, and again by another nine minutes from overclocking. So when comparing both overclocked processors, the 8600K is 11% quicker, saving us a total of 26 minutes. That's a significant amount of time when you think about it, and personally, it's enough time for me to create a thumbnail or even upload the video. So the 8600K is easily the better processor across all tasks, and when considering those improvements for an entire project, the results are pretty significant. I'd be very interested to repeat these benchmarks when I get my hands on some more processors as well. The R5 1600 and the R7 1700 should do fairly well in these tests, however the lower clock speed may hurt them in some tasks. Let me know what you guys think of these benchmarks. I think I'll include these in future CPU testing if that's something you guys would like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.